Hello everyone, my name is Voltera, I'm a developer for Krita, and I'm recording this at the 2018 Krita Developer Sprint. We're convening together to fix bugs, to discuss how to fix certain bugs, to figure out the systems that cause certain bugs. But that is not the only thing we're doing. We're also looking at patches that people have been sending in and trying to get them ready to be added to the program. Today I wanted to show you two patches that have been put into the program recently. One by a volunteer named Anna Medonozova and the other by a Google Summer of Code student named Michael Zhao. They both relate to color picking, so that's why I put together this image for you. It is an image of a bird that's very, quite common around here, a kingfisher, and I've made a silly little picture out of it. The image is quite interesting to use because uh, it's a very colorful little bird, and uh, this image here is from Wikipedia, from Wikimedia Commons. I put it in as a reference image. But as you can see, uh, the colors of this bird is very, are very nice, so that's why I want to show you how to use it with the new gamut masks, which are Anna Medenozova's uh, feature that she added. So we're going to Dockers and adding the gamut mask Docker. And so a gamut mask, what it basically creates is that it limits the current colors. So you can't select outside of this range. See? So you, what you get is a very strict palette. This is a complementary palette. And it's like all sorts of different palettes that different gamut masks can give. You can create your own gamut masks, but we're not looking at that today. So, but what we're going to go for here is a complementary uh, gamut mask, where because orange and blue are kind of opposite to each other on the uh, U ring, on the U color wheel, so we need to rotate it a little bit to get both orange and blue. Put gray in the middle. And what we're going to do now is, well, first save. Very important. We're going to color it in with the colorize mask. The colorize mask was a feature added in 4.0. Uh, and what the uh, gamut mask allows us to do is that it's allows us to select colors within this limited palette that we create around this color harmony, this, this complementary color harmony. The thing about complementary colors is that they're opposite of each other on the U wheel, which uh, makes a... Uh, which can... means that if you use them in an image, they become very balanced together, like you want to have like a very com a colorful image, but you also want to have it balanced. So that's why you use complementary colors. I've put down some colors and I took one color all the way out of my gamut. I had to turn off my gamut mask for that. And I'm using it as the transparent color. And now I'm running the gamut uh, or the colorize mask. And mixing up those two too much, all those masks. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit, like adding a bit more pink here. And adding some more green. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now we've got our colors. Okay, so now we've got our colors and we're going to convert the colorize masks to a paint layer. And then we're going to go in and split it. The uh, split layers you see can use a palette for the names. And now we have like all these nicely named uh, color layers that we can use. They're all alpha locks as well, so we can just start painting and use uh, our click to select them from the, uh, from the canvas viewport. Let's have a little bit of sparkle in the eye, because otherwise the little bird looks like it's dead. This is uh, because when creatures die, their eyes become all foggy and they don't shine anymore. So to really make a creature look alive in a drawing, you need to add a little bit of shine. Now we're going to look at Michael Zhao's uh, Google Sum of Code work. He has been fixing up the palette docker. So let's make a new palette. And straight away you can see that it's quite different. He, um, his main thing that he did is that he introduced this concept of the grid being just a position where the uh, color entry is and that you can have positions that are empty. And in previous versions of Krita, the uh, palette docker was just a list of colors. So now we can just put our colors in an arbitrary place. Just, just click on a empty spot and we can drag it around. And we can reduce the amount of columns very easily. Like there's so many th new things that can be done. And now I've added one too many. But let's take off the colors and put them in. We can just organize them. And this is really quite nice. It's uh, I'm personally very impressed with this work. So we've got all our colors. Nice and organized. And this just works really well with the uh, gamut masks because we can now just start painting. Uh, let's take a nice brush. Let's make it very big. And select some nice colors. And of course add them to the palette so that we can always refer back to it. So you'll sometimes see me stop for a bit. That's because um, I'm testing out another patch, which is supposed to fix some tablet bugs. But it seems that right now it's also in introducing some tablet bugs. So we're doing, we're adding in some atmospheric perspective, and that stays within the gamut mask because uh, the gamut mask describes extremes of a color and if you mix uh, then what you do is, is that you get the average of two colors so that's in between and if you go in between the extremes that is uh, within the gamut mask sometimes you might see it actually go outside of uh, the gamut mask this too is a little bit of a bug, but that's the thing is that if you don't test out uh, things, then you will never see the bugs. 
So hopefully we can fix that. At this point I realize, yeah, I start organizing the crown a bit more. You can double click a color to change the name. They have default names, but of course it's very nice to know which color you were actually using for what. And at this point, uh, there's nothing really specific uh, to, that I'm going to show you, so I'm just going to fast forward all of this and then you can uh, see me finish this image. If you think it's really cool how people are able to get uh, features that they themselves want to use into Krita, uh, then please do support our fundraiser. Our fundraiser is uh, primarily for fixing bugs. But uh, that also means uh, making Krita more fun to use, making Krita uh, more stable, and of course, helping people to get their preferred features or their f the features they're working on into Krita. And if you really want to help support that, then please support our fundraiser. You can find it at krita.org. And there's like a donate form at the bottom. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, keep on bug fixing for the rest of the year so, so that Krita can become even more pleasant to use for both you and me. And no, that's the power of open source. <laughs>